I gave you my elevator pitch a little earlier in this call, right? It's like, hi, I'm Kim Ann. I'm a local children's book author. I have 25 titles, primarily ages three to eight. As soon as I said, I'm Kim Ann, a local children's book author, the ears went up. So I always say, if I can make eye contact, I've sold. Welcome, everybody. We have a special speaker today. Kim Ann is with us. She is an expert at events, and she's going to talk today about all things events, what you need, how to sell more books at events, and fill all the tea and the knowledge that she has for us. So I'm going to go ahead and let you go introduce yourself, Kim Ann, and I'm going to pass the baton to you. Hi, everyone. I'm sure I've seen you all in the author groups, <laughs> but I'm Kim. Kim is fine. My pen name is Kim Ann. <laughs> this was a fun holiday event where the Girl Scouts came to see me and they earned a badge. So that was kind of fun. <laughs> okay. So I'm a 12-time best-selling and multi-award winning author. I write fun, colorful, imaginative books for kids. So I just gave you my elevator pitch right there, right? In two seconds, I told you who I was and what I sell and why people should stop and talk to me. I've published 25 books now, including Ninja School Rules, which I do a lot of teacher events with that one in schools, 10 Little Sandpipers, which is a counting rhyming book about sandpipers at the beach. I told you guys earlier that I live here in California and I sell a lot of these books in like museums and different aquariums and places like that. Ruby the Rainbow Witch was my first book, has a book series. It's a teacher's pick on Amazon and has been for two years. Goldie the Puppy is my puppy series, kind of like April. And I have a go on vacation book series, which is a fun series. I have seven books in there. And it's basically to read with children to help them think outside the box and use their imaginations. I also co-authored an affirmation book and card series with Yomi Q. If anybody know her, she's a, an author in our group as well. And she writes Asian adventure books. And I've sold over 100,000 books globally. And when I say globally, I mean on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, independent bookstores, museums, craft shows, <laughs> art fairs, in my in-person events. And almost every weekend, I can be found selling my books. That is a true, true statement. <laughs> so when I go into an event, and what I suggest is you think about what your goals are. Like, why am I doing this event? For some people, they're really looking to push their merchandise. Maybe you've done offset printing, and you have some cases in your garage, like I do, and you're looking to sell more books. Sometimes it's to help your email list. And I'm sure April talks to you guys about why the importance of having an email list. Sometimes it's a dollar amount. I go into every weekend event and, and this is high or low, but this is what I do. Every weekend I go in, I'm going to make $1,000 or more. That's my goal every single weekend to make new connections. A lot of events and school visits, magazines, write-ups, those happen because of the people that I meet at my author events. So some people might go into this trying to make connections in their community. Press in social media. Sometimes you just need stuff to post on your social media. So I always do a little video. I do pictures. I go live in Facebook groups when I'm at my events. Um, and that's just getting the word out more and more. And, and I'll go on and say, hey, come stop by here. I'm down at the pier. Come visit me. The sun's shining. I'm selling books, signing books and press. It really does happen. I've been interviewed by magazines, by people that I've met at events. And that's something that's really cool. So if you guys are looking for press, maybe you have a Kickstarter coming up. Maybe you have a new book coming up. Yeah, that's so interesting that uh, the types of connections you can make in person are just amazing. Teachers and mm -hmm. grandparents and everybody seems to know somebody else. So I love that idea that you can just make such amazing connections. And if you're not doing it, you might really be missing out. Yes, right. Because we think, oh, well, they'll find me. <laughs> they can't always find you, right? <laughs> okay. So when I said, what are your goals? All of these reasons. So every weekend when I get up to go to my events, I think about all of these things, okay? And some may be important, more important at different times, like at the during the summer, I might be meeting teachers, like April said, uh, PTO presidents, 
if I'm going into a Kickstarter and I'm looking for press, I mean, that happens. I do a event here in the summer called the Summer Fest, and it's a four day event. And the press is always there. And I always make sure I'm like, <laughs> try to get in some of the photos. And then, of course, social media. I do my own social media. So I'm always looking for new things to post. Okay. As I said, you have to have the right mindset. And I know a lot of us are introverts. A lot of authors are introverts, right? But it's like sometimes it's just the persona that you have, right? I'm Kim Ann, the author. And so I put on my persona. So I always make sure that I have the right mindset. I am an author. I wrote a great book or books. There's people and they want to meet me. Believe it or not, guys, you are like celebrities. (laughs) People get really excited to meet the author. There are kids out there that want to read our books and I know I can do this. So these are like the things that I kind of say to myself and it's true. So I gave you my elevator pitch a little earlier in this call, right? It's like, hi, I'm Kim Ann. I'm a local children's book author. I have 25 titles, primarily ages three to eight. And I've used the same illustrator in all of my books. Can I show you something? As soon as I said, I'm Kim Ann, a local children's book author, the ears went up. (laughs) So I always say, if I can make eye contact, I've sold. (laughs) So you want to work on that elevator pitch. We'll talk a little bit about that later, but it just flows off my tongue. I don't even think about it. (laughs) As soon as I get eye contact, I'm going to sell. So here's a reality of the shows, because I can stand here and tell you that I make $1,000 a weekend plus, you know, I'm pushing books, I'm getting social media and media press, but here's the reality. Events are going to be between three and eight hours. Now, even if you're lucky enough to get a three-hour event, you've got at least an hour to 90 minutes at the front and an hour at the end for your cleanup. So the reality is it's a long day. If you can invite a helper or two, great. I do 99.9% of my events by myself. I used to call myself just an author with a hatchback, but now I have a minivan. (laughs) but I do a lot of these by myself. You will need a cart or wagon. I actually have both. And when we talk later about some of the things I suggest, I'll give you links to the ones I've used, but whatever works for you. Always stay hydrated and bring snacks, especially if you're doing this by yourself. There's not a break for lunch. This happens to me all the time. I will ask people to watch my boots so I can run and use the restroom. But a lot of times I'm eating what I brought, which tends to be like protein bars and protein cookies and a lot of water. There was a story of one of the authors about two years ago in the group she posted. She actually got dehydrated and they had to call the paramedic support thing because she didn't have any sun shield right? She didn't have like a canopy or an umbrella and she was dehydrated. So always stay hydrated. You will definitely sell more being at an event than being home. This is what I say to myself. If someone offers me an event and I'm like, I am not sure I want to do it. I say, you know what, Kim, you're definitely going to sell more being there than being at home. And that usually gives me the motivation to go smile, laugh, and have fun. Now that's easy for me. I know (laughs) because I really am passionate about being out in my community. It's like, I live in Huntington Beach, California, which is Surf City, USA. It's a big place. There's a lot of authors here, lots that I know and some that I don't, but it's my personal mission to be known as the HB local author favorite. Okay. So I'm going to take all the events I can, and I'm going to make sure that everybody that comes to my booth, is going to have a pleasant experience. So I smile, I laugh, and I have fun a lot. You guys know, you walk into a store and someone greets you and they're like, hi, how are you today? And then they turn their back. Like, you know, like you feel like you're intruding on their space. It's the same with the booth. You have to be inviting so that they want to come in. Okay, so I mentioned that I'm going to give you like five quick tips on every author event. So the first one is icebreakers. And this is going to help all my introvert friends. <laughs> okay. So I mentioned earlier that as soon as I can get someone to give me the eye contact, I know I've sold, right? But you're going to have those parents that vent their faces are in the phones. They're looking through the diaper bag. They're looking through their purse. They don't want to look at you. I see a little child and I'm like, would you like a sticker? Mom, is it okay if I give them a sticker? That one always wins. (laughs) If they're a little bit older and they look over, I say, do you like to read? Would you like a bookmark? And my elevator pitch. As soon as I get the eye contact, they know who I am, right? 
And I can say it again if you want, but you guys get the point. You know, you always say local, if that's true, if you are local. I mean, if you're traveling for something, no. But I always say, I'm an HB local author, right? I tell them I'm an award-winning and best-selling author. A lot of you guys are on Amazon or you'll soon be published on Amazon. When you first get your book out there, hopefully you do all the hard work and you get yourself a, a you know number one new release banner or you get yourself a bestseller and then you're able to share that. <laughs> Candy, fruit snacks, crafts, et cetera. I do the HB Artisan Fair down here in Huntington Beach, and I am required to have a craft there. So she gives me a free booth, and I can sell my books, but I have to offer a craft. So in this case, I'll have a little table there. I don't bring coloring sheets, okay? I know a lot of people are like, oh, coloring sheets. I like to give them a real reason to come in because if you offer just coloring sheets, and it's just my opinion, people have other opinions, the parents will take it and they'll color it at home. Okay. So that's just my two cents on that. I do a craft. It's always very easy for me to put together. It's sorry. It's going to get loud. I think the street sleepers outside. It's always easy for me to put together. And then I usually put a video on my social media. I'll do a reel, but things like the tongue depressors, the craft sticks, you can put anything, glue it on a craft stick and you're making puppets. So if you do have coloring sheets, I offer like dinosaurs, unicorns, ninjas, things that I have in my books, because I'll always also put a couple of books on the table with the craft, but I'll have them color the dinosaur. And then I'll be like, oh, can I help you cut that out? And we cut it out. I talk to mom and dad. Okay, sweetheart, you're going to put the glue on the back, give them the glue, the tongue depressor. They use the glue stick. We put it together. They now have a dinosaur puppet, right? So you can always kind of up that coloring game. <laughs> And Pinterest is great. So if you have a book on puppies, look up, you know, easy or preschool puppy crafts, something like that, something that you can do easy. And I do have two craft bags. I always carry like instruction paper. I have the little uh, the craft sticks, glue sticks and some scissors. And I don't leave the scissors out for the child. I always ask the parent, can I help them cut it out or are they able to cut it out? So, you know, you, you don't make that decision for them. But I do always offer a craft. Now, I mentioned about the crap, the candy and the fruit snacks. Some parents don't want their kids to have candy. So if I put out fruit snacks in a bowl, a lot of times they'll ask me if they can have a fruit snack. And I'm like, oh, sure. And then it's my chance to give an elevator pitch, right? So that's why I kind of added that. Now, I put a comment down here, brand yourself with swag. And what I mean by that, I'll show you some of my boot setups in a little bit. I always have a t-shirt on or sweatshirt that says author. Um, when I do my school events for Ninja School Rules, I had a t-shirt made that says, author, not sensei. <laughs> and I get a lot of giggles about that, but they know I'm the author. I have banner that says author also has my face <laughs> behind me. I have a eight and a half by 11 sheet that I just print out and I put it in one of those like clear frames that I got at the dollar store that's on my table. There is multiple places for them to tell that I am the author because that is what's going to make you stand out. There's a lot of people out there that sell like those Osborne books or they resell books, right? So as they're walking by, they're not going to automatically know that you're the author. So make that easy. <laughs> okay, show stopping booth tip number two. <laughs> so here is a basic booth setup for me, okay? And this, this is actually like a little bit old. If there's one thing you know, if you follow me or you see me, is my booth always looks different because we're chameleons, you have to adapt, right? For example, we had a very wet weekend here. They ended up canceling the first two days. And then I got a text the night before that they wanted me to come on Sunday. So I was a little afraid about the ground being wet, right? So I was going to make some changes. There was no cardboard cutouts that day, right? So you're always kind of changing based on where you're going to be. But tables, six foot and four foot tables. I bring one of each. I actually now bring two six foot and a four foot, but you'll grow into that. Fitted tablecloths are my favorite because I don't worry about them blowing away. Those are the ones that hook under the feet of the table. I'll have it on my sheet for you guys to see, but you can see here it's, and it looks like that side maybe lifted behind my little cardboard cutout, but they hook under the feet and that way you don't worry too much about wind. Cardboard cutouts are super fun. I've also even used them as like a photo stop where I bought those little things on a stick where they could put like a mustache or a little hat. And I've used it as a photo booth opportunity. It's also eye-catching. If you happen to be 
have your cut out in the front, kids will see it. <laughs> book displays, you have to figure out how you're going to display your book. This is a pretty basic one. The link is on my sheet. I actually have not been using this now because I have so many books. I went a different direction, but this is super easy for people and it's pretty durable. I will make the comment though, it is made out of a thick cardboard. If you take clear packing tape and you wrap it, you'll get a lot longer life out of it. Pop-up canopy and weights. A lot of places, if you have outdoor events, they will suggest or they will require a 10 by 10 white canopy. Some are not that fussy, but some are. And weights. I didn't need weights the first year I did events because I was doing them in the earlier part of the year. But all of the events I've done recently, I've needed weights for them. So you can buy a pop-up kit that comes with the pop-up canopy and it comes with a weight set, or you can just look at those on Amazon. It looks like a free weight that you would use on a dumbbell, but has like a slit in it. It goes around the leg of the pop-up or some are like sandbags. Okay. Table runners are fun. These are really easy to make like on Vista print, you know, just so that when people are walking down the aisle, they can see that that's another way to brand yourself that says author came in. And banners. I love banners. You see here, I have a retractable sign. And then in some of the other pictures, I'll show you the vinyl banners I use. The only thing I'm going to say about retractable signs is if you are in an area that's windy, it's not the best investment if you're doing outdoor events. I know some people are going to tell you it is, but I've seen it happen. The wind will blow so much that now it makes it kind of lopsided. So the ones that I have now, I can only take to indoor events because they've not made it through outdoor events. So I choose to use banners now. And then you see some of these, there's one here right above Ruby the Rainbow, which there's a little like poster that I made that another way of branding myself. And I happen to have a Kickstarter then because that poster on the right was one of my Kickstarter rewards. <laughs> looks beautiful. Looks beautiful. I just love what you've done here. <laughs> Thank Gorgeous. you. It's very inviting. I love that it's very inviting. That's important, I think, right? Because you have to stand out in a sea of boots. <laughs> right? So I think a lot about color. This was like one of a two-hour event out in a parking lot. Did not have a pop-up or anything. Very, very simple. A lot of the things were the same, but here I used a pricing sign. Some people like to put the prices and some don't. I have the link for that as well. I tend to not use it now. And the reason I'm going to tell you that is because it's another reason to talk to someone who's looking at your book. As soon as someone takes the book, right, they pick it up, they're looking at it. As soon as they turn it over, I know. They're looking for the barcode, right? So I say, oh, my books are $15 signed or two for 25. I know those prices are low. Those are the prices I do personally at events. You can charge whatever, $18.95, which is normally, or, you know, some people do 20 because they figure it's signed. It's worth more. When I go to events, I'm looking to push merchandise and I offset print so I can afford to do that. But as soon as they flip it over, I take that opportunity to tell them how much it is. So that's why I don't use a pricing sign. This one actually was a swap meet. It was really fun. But if you notice here, as the day went on, I had to like drag my tables back because even though I had a canopy, the sun was like, beaming right in on me. So as I said, got to be a chameleon and you got to be able to adapt. And I will say, if you wrap anything, so this is a Christmas time because I can tell these are my Santa elf book with the elfie. If you have anything in cellophane, if you don't know this, if the sun hits it, even though it's a book, it will develop moisture on the inside. You would think that our books don't have moisture on the inside, but they do. So what I do is I tend to put a little pinhole in the plastic and I tried to it's cellophane and try to keep it out of the sun, but they do. I did not know that. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> this is an event, uh, an indoor mall, or it was like an indoor outdoor mall. And here I did make a sign with some Christmas specials, holiday specials, because where I was, I wasn't able to have a banner or anything. So this actually worked well to get people's attention. This in the bottom left was actually a book launch. So it was a little extra <laughs> with the balloons and everything. And then this one on the right um, was just like a local artisan fair kind of thing. That was kind of fun. But do you see this, my elf cut out in the back? As I said earlier, I did it as a selfie station. And so people were taking pictures with the elf and then posting it on social media and tagging me. I also do indoor events and I can pretty much set up anywhere. So this is a UFC gym. 
<laughs> they were having an anniversary. They asked me if I wanted a table. I said, sure. They actually sent me right up in the cardio room. <laughs> so it was interesting. So you can see again how this would be a lot different than another setup. And then these next few, I have a ninja book. And if you guys don't know Ninja School Rules, my daughter's a third degree black belt. And I wrote that book for her master, Taekwondo master. He gives it to the families when they sign up. So I do a lot of martial art events. This was in his studio. This was at a belt testing before anyone got there. This was at one of his other studios. This one was really fun. And it was, I had a quite an elaborate setup there because it was actually for a black belt testing. And I was in the lobby of a, a beautiful theater. And then, oh, there's my sensei, author, not sensei shirt. These are also both uh, martial arts events. So you can see how it's different. We don't have a canopy. It's harder to put a sign behind you. But in a pinch, guys, blue painter's tape is my favorite. You can take your banner and tape it to the front of a table. You can use it to tape your posters to the back of your easel so they don't blow over and it doesn't rip the paper. So I always suggest you have three inch blue painter tape. Okay, so we talked a little about this earlier. So what will you sell, right? I mean, I sell a lot of different things. I'm not as big a merchandiser, but you have to decide, are you going to do offset copies? Offset copies are the ones we print in China or in the US. POD copies are your Amazon and your Inger Spark copies. Are you going to offer hardcover and paperback? Some people, when they do print on demand copies, they bring paperbacks because they make a little bit more profit on them at events, but that's totally up to you. I sell a lot more hardcover at my events, but there's just as many authors that will tell you they sell more paperbacks. That's kind of a personal thing. Will you offer specials? Like I said, for the holidays, for Christmas time, I was offering specials. And then I just kind of have my ongoing pricing that I use. Are you going to offer merchandise? I do have custom plush and custom poppets. So I do offer merchandise, but I offer like minimal merchandise. And what I do is any of my little extras, my plushies or my poppets, they're $10 individually or $5 with the purchase of a book. So I just took my $15 hardcover sale and added a plushie and made it 20. I like to deal in round numbers. <laughs> Other authors' books. There are some authors that actually take some of my books to their events. So if you have, you know, a book on maybe other sea creatures and you wanted to offer more variety for people to come up to your booth, you may reach out to me and say, hey, Kim, can I buy wholesale and resell your book? So that's something that some people do. The only other author books I take are Yobi Q's because we co-authored together and she takes my books to her events and I take hers. And activity table. Will you have an activity table? What will you do as a craft for the kids? Number three, <laughs> be prepared, just like a Boy Scout and a Girl Scout, right? So I always suggest to have these helpful printables. If I'm talking to someone, do I have my business cards ready? And one of the icebreakers I said is bookmarks. Do I have a bookmark ready? Introduction flyers and posters, branding ourselves. So this here, it started as a page in my media kit. It has now become something I use everywhere. I printed this page out. And I have it in an eight and a half by 11 frame on my table. And then a scan to pay. In today's world, if you guys get square and if you haven't looked into that kind of thing, I also have that on the resource sheet. This scan to pay was a lot more important, but now with Square, I can tap phones with people and take Apple Pay, credit cards, everything now. I barely use my scan to pay sheet, but it's good to have. Every now and then someone wants to use Zelle or Venmo. I mean, you can also just go to Venmo and you know, scan me. They make it really easy to get the money, which is nice. <laughs> and let's see, are you going to have giveaway slips? Some people like to have giveaways to get email addresses, or they like to have an email list to sign up. You can also do that with the QR code. So if that's something you're going to do, you'd want to have that ready. So when you're talking to someone and you can say, well, here, you can follow me along on Instagram here, drop the email in there and I'll, you know, I'll let you know when I'm going to be here again, something like that. The only thing I'm going to caution about giveaways if you're the author of a single title, don't offer to give your book for free for people to give you their email address and enter a drawing. Why? Because they're not going to buy your book. They're going to wait and see if they won. So what I do suggest, you can make a little bundle, even if it's not, doesn't even pertain to your book. Say I have a unicorn book. I go to the Dollar Tree, get a unicorn notebook and throw in some crayons and some stickers. And you could just offer like, if you give me your email address, I'm having a drawing for these unicorn activity bundles. Okay, so it will go with your book without giving away your book. And I hope that makes sense to you guys, because I see a lot of authors offer a free version of their book. If you only have one, I would say don't do that. <laughs>
Okay, step four. How do I get events, Kim? I'm ready to go. You pumped me up. Now, how do I find events? <laughs> Does anyone have that question? I get that question a lot. Where am I going to get my events, Kim? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so here is a whole list of ideas for you guys. Local community boards and forums on Facebook. I am on every HB community page I can find. Facebook events in your area. If you're on Facebook, you can go into events and you can put in Huntington Beach or children's events and it'll give it to you like what's around you. There are special vendor Facebook groups. So where I'm located is called Orange County and there's a lot of Orange County vendor Facebook groups. The people that kind of hang out in there are the people that sell like the nails or paparazzi jewelry or, you know, Tupperware if that's still around, those kinds of kind of multi-level marketing But I do end up going to those events once in a while and I'll be the only author. So it's a good thing. (laughs) Friends and family connections. As I mentioned earlier, Master Vo has been a great supporter and advocate of my books. And he lets people know (laughs) about me and my books. And I get invited places. When I go down to the Artisan Fair, the woman that runs that has gotten me into other places. So friends and family, they know (laughs) I know someone that, you know, works here. I know someone that owns this store. You know, my daughter is the president of the PTO, whatever. And that goes into the next one. Church events, PTO, PTA school events. Those are great places to be able to find them looking for people to have booths. Like think about all of the summer fairs they have or carnivals. They're always looking for people. Eventbrite, go on Eventbrite and you put in children's events and put your local area. Farmers, markers, festivals, and fairs. I've done all those. (laughs) And again, you just kind of find ones that are close to you or places that you're willing to drive. Holiday and seasonal events are the best. So Christmas bazaars and what do you call it? Trunk or treat events at Halloween. There's lots of kids there. Those kinds of things are awesome. Local sporting events. Maybe you have a book about, you know, a ballerina and then You could have a booth at one of these big like dance conventions, right? Because how many moms would be like, oh, could you sign this book for my baby ballerina, right? That's a great thing. I do martial arts events. See, extracurricular events, dance recitals, martial art tournaments, Instagram. Check out hashtags for your area and your theme, right? So hashtag ninja, hashtag Huntington Beach, hashtag, you know, beach cleanup. You know, sometimes they have like little things that I could put a booth there. Local indie bookstores, someone mentioned that earlier. If you search IndieBound.org, I haven't searched it in a little while, but that will give you a bunch of independent bookstores that you can reach out to. Here's one very underutilized. Your city website has a calendar of events and they upload that usually like a year in advance. So check that out. Retail spaces and malls also have calendar of events. And I've reached out when I noticed like they have something scheduled for Christmas. I've reached out at the beginning of the year and say, I have a Santa and Elf book. Would you be interested in having an author? And I've gotten events that way. Local pop-ups or host your own. So pop-ups are, you know, a group of authors might all live in Huntington Beach and let's just have a pop-up. And then we would all share about it or host your own. Step number five, shop smart. I don't want anyone to sit here and go, oh my gosh, can you have so much stuff? It's going to cost me so much money to get all this stuff. I have a lot of stuff and my setup is pretty impressive, but I've been doing this for a long time now. Okay. When you saw an example of when I first started and I just had a table and, you know, a cardboard book that shelf that cost me $18 and I put my books in it. Okay. So where and how do I shop? Don't get everything at once. (laughs) You know, you can print out your price list on a paper and go to the dollar store and buy a frame. Okay. You don't need to have these big, beautiful posters and everything right away. Look for sales and coupons, end of sale season and clearance. I bought my pop-up tent after the summer, right? Because the Ace Hardware down the street was having 50% off clearance. And I ended up paying, I was like $60 or something. So, you know, think about those things. Today's deals on Amazon, those are great. And they usually tend to be pretty relevant, right? You might be able to grab a wagon or, you know, some easels or something like that. Today's deals, sometimes the tablecloths, and they'll be under $10. They'll be like $8. See what is working first. That's going to be my tip, right? When you go to events, 
look around and say, oh yeah, I'd like that. Yeah, that looks like that would be a good thing to have. Or, you know, you could take the advice of other authors when you're in the big group and you're seeing all of their pictures and their all their tips, just like anything else, you know, everybody's looking for a reason to post. So just make sure that you like, you really look at their setup, you know, ask April, like, do you really think that's necessary? <laughs> because some people will go, you know, they'll go get their canopy and they'll have it printed on all the sides. And that's a lot of extra money that you really don't need. And it might work for them. But I do the same with my $12 banner, which I'm going to talk about in a second. So see what's working for others and see what's working for you. Here's the link. It's tinyurl.com slash Kim shop list. That's where you guys can download my handy dandy sheet. That list has everything from like what tape I like all the way down it has everything. That is part. so helpful because we get the benefit of all of your experience. I just got an email this morning that Sticker Mule has a $14 custom t-shirts that you can create. Just upload your artwork and you can create it for yourself. So when you were talking about t-shirts, you can have author, you can have your, your character on the t-shirt, yes. whatever. For $14, that's not bad. Sticker Mule is amazing to work with anyway. You could totally yeah. send them a page from your book and go, could you cut out the ninja? I'd like to put it on the t-shirt. You put it in the, and they'll send you a proof. They'll do it. So that author, yeah. not sensei shirt was made on Sticker Mule for the $14 custom shirt. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love yeah. it. Sign up for all of those mailing lists, guys. For And, and I have a bunch on that sheet. Vista, that print, yeah, Vista print is another that has some really good yeah. coupon codes. And sometimes too, the ones that I would do I would end up going to like CVS, my local drug stores would have huge discounts on uh, canvas and other things that I would just use to put art out there or create something really my cool. My absolute favorite. So if you guys are in the US and you have one, <laughs> photo.walgreens.com. I talk about them all the time. That 90% of the time it's 50 off. Sometimes it's 60 off and you get it in yep. an hour. Yeah, um, and here I can show you real quick, just for example, but like this was like my vision board. I right? love it. And it was $12 with the coupon code. And so I make these with my author information on them and you can update them. So when they get updated for $12, I don't mind making a new one, but I get my vinyl banners made there as well. And so At I Walgreens? to photo.walgreens. Oh, wow. That's awesome. And so I have more than one. Nice. <laughs> and I, I attach them to my booth with bungee cords and I put a code in there for this bucket of bungee cords I travel with. But mm -hmm. I then I can just wrap them right around because the banners from Walgreens have come with the holes in them. So it's really helpful. Lee is asking, what happens with your craft table if parents walk away and leave the kids? <laughs> do, you, do you deal with that issue? Well, I do a little bit because it's at the beach. But if they are saying you can stay here in color and I just say, oh, they're welcome to color, but I will be running my boots. So I won't be able to watch them. And then they kind of, oh, OK, so it's not a babysitting area. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, and Tiana was asking, do you just buy author copies through Amazon and then sell them at the event if you're doing POD? You can do that. I actually I do offset printing. And when I go, I don't bring all of my books. So that's one thing I learned is if I bring everything, it's kind of overwhelming and it's a lot of work for me. So depending, I bring, when I'm at the beach, I bring my mermaids, my pirates, my sandpipers. I always bring ninjas. And so, and then at Christmas time, I bring Elf and Santa. So I kind of switch it up. But yes, and this is just my suggestion. So I don't know what, but I, I think April might agree. And it's on my my reference sheet anyway. But if I'm going to do print on demand paperbacks, I prefer Ingram Spark. <laughs> and the okay. reason being is because when you break down, if you buy 50 or 100 and you break down the cost per, it's lower than KDP and I get them faster. So that's my experience. Nicole says, do you have another piece of tech with another account? Or do you have a personal device with author financial accounts? I take my phone. I do have two Venmo accounts and two PayPal accounts, but I just make sure I'm logged into the business ones. And, and people are cool anyway. I mean, it's like, I've done that. I've pulled up my Venmo and be, oh, one second, just pay the hairdresser. I got to switch that over. Like they're fine with it. 
But I, okay, so I did end up getting a second phone only because I registered on like Dun and Bradstreet, some places like that, because I have some things going on. And so I couldn't use my personal phone number, but I don't take this one. So they're all just on my main phone. <laughs> How many books do you have to have written to do these kinds of events, do you think? I mean, you can, you can do an event with one book. I've seen it. That's why I brought up the suggestion is, you know, maybe at the beginning, you see if you have another author friend and you guys want to share a table or you want to bring some of their books. People do it depending on the venue. All right. I mean, I might, I would do a table inside an indie bookstore with one title. I wouldn't necessarily do a large swap meet with just one book and no other merchandise. Right, right, right. Pat is asking, how many of each copy do you usually bring? So I go by the case myself. So I let's just roughly say I bring about 50 of each title because it's also fun to sell out. And then it goes back to the goal setting. Like I said at the beginning, what was your goal? If your booth was $45, it cost you $45 and you make, you know, three or four bucks on a book, which is the reality after you print them and ship them or whatever. So, you know, like, okay, I need to sell 10 books. And then everything after that is my profit, right? So, you know, do you want to bring 50? Do you want to bring a hundred? In my experience, I haven't really sold a hundred of a title, even during the holiday. Could you comment, Kim Ann, about the, some kind of tax certificate or do you, you know, in order to be able to sell in a specific state, what kinds of things you also have to make sure you take care of with regard to applications and taxes? Yes. So some events, when they invite you, they will say you can come this time as our guest and it's not required. But I already had all of this taken care of before because I've had businesses before. So I have a tax reseller ID number for the state of California. I have a Huntington Beach business license, (laughs) which is about, it costs you like a hundred and 20 bucks a year or something to have that. And I also have liability insurance. Oh, talk more about that yes. because a lot of people are asking about that too. I had a feeling that was going to perk people's ears up. So again, I wasn't asked at first. I probably went a good year of doing events when no one didn't ask me for liability insurance, but I see it more and more now. So I have a policy. I'll tell you guys, it's usually worth it to buy for the year. It's about... $500 for a year, at least for me locally here. I've seen people get it lower, but it's fine. It's about $500 a year, or it's like a couple hundred dollars for a one day event. So you can see how that's not going to, that doesn't cut it, right? It's much better. And you got to write it off on your taxes anyway. So just buy a year if you're going to plan on doing these. So I'm covered for a million dollars outside of the venue. So if the venue is insured anyway, and you're at a mall, and something happens, people are going to most likely sue the mall, okay? But if they tripped over the leg of my table and then fell down, they could also sue me. So I have liability insurance up to a million dollars plus whatever the venue has. So that's why I, when I talked to an insurance agent about it the first time I was asked, and she said, it's actually a very good idea for authors, right? Because also if you're selling plush and stuff, God forbid, I mean, all mine are safety tested, but it's like it could choke or, you know, any of these things you want to make sure that you're covered. So is that liability specifically for events or is it overall liability insurance for an author? It's overall business liability insurance. So it covers me up to a million for whatever. I would love to get information about where you get your liability policy, because I've been searching uh, for one of my authors who's been asking about this. And boy, the quotes that we're getting are just very, very expensive. It also depends where they live, April, unfortunately, okay. because I, I someone asked me before and I reached out to the woman that was I like, it's a woman owned, military owned insurance agency. So I like her. And I was like, hey, tell me what states you can cover so that I can help spread this around. So it might depend on that. But my policies are nationwide. And what is it that you ask for? Because what I found is that people have no clue what I'm talking about when I call to ask about quotes. They're like, well, no, she was amazing. About? So when this first yeah. happened, I have a lawyer friend. So the first time this happened, I was like, I have no idea. So I text my lawyer friend and I'm like, they're asking me about liability insurance, right? And she was like, oh, here, call my friend. She's awesome, whatever. So I called her and she was like, oh yeah, Kim, no problem. This is what you need. 
That's <laughs> like so she made okay. it really easy for me. Um, so if anyone's in California, and I want to say she might do Nevada, maybe. But if you're on this coast and you want to reach out, I'll gladly give you her name because maybe she knows somebody else, you know, that she could refer you to anyway. But I'm happy to suggest that. <laughs> Okay. Cause they all, they want to know like, what kind of liability are you want to be covered for? Is it from somebody tripping at an event? Is it somebody saying you stole their story? Like, so there's all oh, kinds of, yeah, I don't, I didn't, questions. I think it's more about like, or falling and stuff like that. And who knows? I mean, I, I know like I'm covered, like I'm driving to my event, something happens like that kind of thing. It's like an umbrella policy for my little business, but I don't know about, you know, if someone was throwing copyright or that might be different. <laughs> this was really, really, really helpful. Thank you again. I hope you'll come back and visit us and talk about school visits sometime soon. Thank you so much. Get out there and sign up for some events and let me know how it goes. Okay. All right. Thank you.